This broadcast is brought to you in memory of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi and made possible by the generous donations of viewers like you and New Wine Covenant Partners. Welcome to Maximize Life. With Dr. Tayo Adeyemi of New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. Now here is Dr. Tayo Adeyemi. Take your Bible, go with me now to Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. Matthew 26, 40. This will be our foundation scripture for this entire series. Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Father, we thank you, because entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. We thank you because there is power in your word. Your word is like a fire, like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And this morning, as we sit under your word, we ask you, to transform our lives, to ignite in us a new passion, a new fire in the place of prayer. Lord, will you anoint me to deliver your counsel with precision, exactitude, and accuracy? And will you anoint your people to receive the word on good ground? I pray that the word this morning will take root in our hearts and bear fruit in our lives and bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Help me preach this morning. Touch two or three people and tell them for me, watch with me one hour. Watch with me one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, just about every believer agrees that there is power in prayer. Who says amen there? In fact, many who do not consider themselves to be committed Christians would attest to the power of prayer. We all know that it is good to pray. And we all know that prayer works. Almost every one of us can testify to the efficacy of prayer in our own personal lives. Well, maybe we haven't seen all of our prayers answered, but at least we have seen some of our prayers, if not most, of our prayers answered. So we cannot deny that prayer works. I never cease to be amazed whenever we go out in the community to minister to people, to witness to people, or to do a survey of some kind, or to invite them to an event. And uh, when we tag on to what we do, uh, uh, an invitation for people to give us their prayer requests, it never ceases to amaze me People who will have nothing to do with God, nothing to do with church, nothing to do with Jesus, still want to be prayed for. Because there is something in the heart of every man that knows that there is power in prayer. Now, if we all agree that prayer is a good thing, if we all agree that prayer works, then it begs the question, how come we do not pray more? How come we do not pray more often? How come we are not more consistent with our prayer lives? How come we are weak in prayer? Why is our experience like that of the disciples of Jesus? In that same passage in Matthew 26, when you look at verse 41, Jesus said of them, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why is that our experience? Ladies and gentlemen, it is sad to note that only a small percentage of believers make prayer a part of their daily experience. I will not embarrass you by asking for a show of hands today. But the reality is there are many believers who go for days without praying. They love God. They understand that prayer is powerful. But somehow, it just does not feature in their daily experience, because we have not learned to give prayer the proper place it deserves in our lives. 
We pray if our emotions draw us to pray. We pray if we happen to have extra time on our hands, which, let's be honest, hardly ever happens. Or we pray if there is a serious need or an emergency. Outside of those specificities, many of us treat prayer like an optional extra to our Christian lives. We must recognize, people of God, that prayer is not optional, it is essential. Tell somebody for me, prayer is not optional, it is essential. People, where there is an absence of prayer, there is an absence of power. Tell your neighbor for me, no prayer, no power. More prayer, more power. So let us start today by reminding ourselves of the power in prayer. Let us remind ourselves of the benefits, of the advantages of prayer. This is how Charles Spurgeon put it. He said, prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of omnipotence. I like that. Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of omnipotence. People of God, what you cannot do, your prayers can do. Where you cannot go, your prayers can go. The people you cannot reach, your prayers can reach. The situations you cannot change, your prayers can change. The circumstances you cannot affect, your prayers can affect. Remember the words of that hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. Let me read it to you. It says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We shall never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, steal our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Tell somebody for me, take it to the Lord in prayer. Dr. Creflo Dollar said, every failure is a prayer failure. And conversely, every success is a prayer success. James chapter 5 verse 16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Tell your neighbor for me, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The New Living Translation says the earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful results. Say great power. Say wonderful results. So how come we're not accomplishing, we're not experiencing great power in our lives? How come we're not accomplishing wonderful results in our lives? Is it possible that it's because we're not people of prayer? The one I like best is the Amplified Version. It says the earnest, heartfelt prayer, earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. When I want tremendous power to be available to me, when I want to deliver tremendous power into a situation, I need to be prayerful. I need to be earnest and consistent in my prayer. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God said, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. People, our God is a hearing God. James 33 verse 3, call to me and I will answer you. Not only is he a hearing God, he is an answering God. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Tell somebody for me, God answers prayer. Prayer works. Watch with me one hour. All through scripture, we see indebutable evidence that prayer works. Prayer has achieved the impossible. Prayer has attained the unattainable. Prayer has reached the unreachable. Prayer has accomplished victory over earth, wind, fire, and water. Prayer has attained dominion over demonic hordes of hell. Prayer has opened the Red Sea, shut the mouths of lions, brought forth water out of a rock, and brought manna from heaven. Prayer has made the sun to stand still. Prayer has called down fire from heaven. Prayer has closed the heavens and then opened them again. Prayer has routed the armies of the enemy. Prayer has opened prison doors. Prayer has broken shackles of bondage. Prayer has healed the sick. Prayer has raised the dead. Prayer has made the impossible possible. Tell somebody for me, prayer works. Tell them, watch with me one hour. You don't need to be smart to be effective in prayer. You simply need to be willing. You don't need the IQ of a rocket scientist to pray. You just need the heart of a willing believer. You don't need a college diploma or degree in theology to be a prayer warrior. All you need is a willing heart and a little bit of time. The reason why many of us do not have consistent and effective prayer lives is that we have not made prayer our priority. Tell your neighbor, make prayer your priority. So easily we allow the concerns of daily living and the cares of life to crowd out prayer from our agenda. It's not that we don't want to pray. It's just that we are too busy and our minds are too preoccupied. But I believe that God is calling us once again to make prayer our priority. Tell your neighbor for me, make prayer your priority. You know, as you go through the Gospels, you will find that in the earthly ministry of Jesus, he asked his disciples many, many, many questions. But there was only one question that he asked specifically relating to prayer. And that's the question we find in our foundation scripture, Matthew 26, 40. Could you not watch with me one hour? Tell your neighbor for me, watch with me one hour. Is it possible that implied in that question is a call to devote one hour to prayer every day? Is it possible? Is it possible? So can I challenge you this morning, people of God, especially as we go into a month of consecration, a month of fasting and prayer, can I challenge you to consider giving God one hour in prayer every day? One hour in prayer every day. 60 minutes dedicated solely to communing with your father. 60 minutes dedicated to engaging with omnipotence. One hour dedicating to transaction between the throne of God and your heart. Not just a few spare minutes here and there, but a substantial, significant amount of your time. One hour, every single day, 60 minutes for nothing else but prayer. Can you imagine what could happen? Can you imagine what would happen if believers who have a, a record of an average of five minutes of prayer every day would take up the challenge and say, I'm going to pray one hour a day. Can you imagine how much power will be made available to them? Can you imagine that they begin to walk in a new dimension of authority?
Can you imagine that they start to walk in a new dimension of dominion? Can you imagine the victory that they will attain in their circumstances? Can you imagine that the temptations that currently overwhelm them will be under their feet? Can you imagine that the demons that currently intimidate them will be fleeing from their presence? Can you imagine that not only will they be more effective in their own lives, they will be a greater blessing to the people around them? Tell somebody for me, watch with me one hour. Now the truth is you are not likely to make time for anything in your life Until you first make it a priority in your heart If it's not important to you, there will be no time for it Now I can hear some of you protesting Pastor Tayo, Pastor Tayo, Pastor Tayo What in the world will I be praying for an entire hour? Pastor Tayo, it's not like I don't want to But when I'm praying, in 10 minutes I am finished and I have prayed for everything I want to pray for, and I prayed for each item twice. <laughs> Perhaps what you need is a kind of system. Perhaps what you need is a pattern, a template that will help you to make the most of your hour. And maybe a good place to start is in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Go there with me. This is Paul's admonition to the Ephesian believers. And he said to them, and pray in the Spirit. I'm reading the New International Version. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Somebody say all kinds of prayers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the implication we have in this passage is that there are different kinds of prayers. And Paul says when we pray, we should employ or engage all kinds of prayers. Say it again, all kinds of prayers. And so if we took our one hour and we divided it into several segments and devoted each segment to a particular kind of prayer, we will find that very quickly an entire hour will be taken up in prayer. In his book, The Hour That Changes the World, Dick Eastman suggests 12 segments of five minutes each. Of course, 12 times five is 60 minutes, which is one hour. But today, I would like to simplify that for you. And I would like to suggest to you six segments of 10 minutes each. If you are making notes this morning, could I ask you now to draw a circle on your notebook? Draw a circle in your notebook. And I want you to imagine that that circle is the face of a clock. And what I'd like you to do is draw a line from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Draw a line from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Draw a second line from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock. First line straight from up to down. Second line diagonal from top right to bottom left. Third line from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Diagonal in the opposite direction, from top left to bottom right. Now what you will find on your page is you now have six segments representing 10 minutes each. And if you take each of those six segments and you devoted each segment to one kind of prayer, you would have six kinds of prayer to fill your hour. So I'm now going to give you six kinds of prayer to put into your hour. Are you ready? Number one, worship. Number two, confession. Number three, intercession. Number four, petition. Number five, meditation. Number six, praise. Let's say them together. Say it with me. Worship, praise. confession, praise. intercession, praise. petition, praise. meditation, praise. praise. Now, if you don't take anything else from this message, I want you to take those six things. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be dealing with each of those kinds of prayer that will fill your hour. But listen, you don't need to wait for me to teach them in church. 
just the fact that you have this model already will be helpful to you in constructing your prayer hour. Just this model. And you can go and start using it the best way you know how to. Now, you may find at the beginning that you cannot devote 10 minutes to each segment. Because, listen, if you're used to praying 5 minutes or 10 minutes a day, it will be quite a challenge to make a leap from there to one hour a day. So you got to take it slowly, one step at a time. So you could start by devoting one minute to each segment. And so your prayer time lasts six minutes. Then take it up from there and devote two minutes to each segment. And then three minutes to each segment. Then five minutes. Then eight minutes. Then ten minutes. And before you know it, you will find that one hour is not even enough for you to pray. Or let's say you devote three minutes to each segment. That's 18 minutes. You could decide you will pray 18 minutes twice a day. Or 18 minutes three times a day. Or 30 minutes three times a day. Do you understand what I'm saying here, people? Now, the point is this, ladies and gentlemen. This is not supposed to be a restrictive or regimented model. It's just supposed to be a guide. It's supposed to be an aid to your prayer. The most important thing is that you incorporate all six segments into your prayer time. All six segments. And you may find that sometimes you will spend more time on one segment than another. So instead of spending 10 minutes on intercession, you may find that your intercession takes you 15 or 20 minutes. And then you can claw back on some of the others or your prayer time increases beyond one hour. Do you understand what I'm dealing with here? But importantly, let me repeat, it is not intended to be a restrictive, regimented, legalistic system. It's simply designed to be an aid to your time of prayer. Let's go through the six again. Say them with me. Say worship. Say confession. Say intercession. Say petition. Say meditation. Say praise. All right, today I'm going to deal with the first of the six. I'm going to deal with worship. Are you ready? In Matthew chapter 6, from verses 9 to 13, Jesus gave his disciples and asked by extension a pattern for prayer. He said, in this manner, therefore pray. And I believe that this was intended to be a pattern or a model rather than for us to recite the words. There are people who recite those words exactly. And if that works for you, that's okay. But I think that what Jesus was delivering to us was a pattern for prayer. But what I want you to notice in that passage is that right at the very onset, Jesus started with worship. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, he said, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Say it with me. Say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So ladies and gentlemen, we start our time of prayer by honoring the name of God. We start our time of prayer with worship. The time of worship is the time to hallow the name of God. It's a time to tell God what we think of Him. It's a time of adoration. A time to adore God. The dictionary says to adore is to love deeply and intensely. Literally, it means to kiss the hand. And I'm sure you've seen people in certain cultures who kiss the hand. Maybe in a religious setting or even just out of uh, chivalry. They kiss the hand. A symbol of deep respect and sometimes of submission. So we begin our prayer with worship. Psalm 100, Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. Especially verse 4 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. But God has given us a prescription on how to come. God says, don't just come to me anyhow. When you come into my gates, 
come with thanksgiving when you come into my courts come with praise we hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast for more details about the dynamic ministry of dr tayo adiemi please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk If truth be told, many of our lives are devoid of the power of God. Not many of us can hand on heart testify that we live in the reality of the raw, real manifestation of the power of God on a regular basis. Fasting unlocks the incredible power of God into your life when it is done according to God's will and with understanding. You need the power of God. When the enemy overwhelms you, intimidates you, and it seems like your heart is overwhelmed and you can't take it anymore, you need the power of God. If you are fed up of a life of despair, frustration, and dissatisfaction, guess your cup of the series, What Happens When You Fast, an insightful teaching series by Dr. Tayo Adeyemi and learn how to achieve outstanding results through fasting and prayer, 10 keys to making the most of your fast, 12 benefits of fasting and so much more. Can cosmic forces be altered? Can demonic forces be disbanded? Can satanic strongholds be upstaged because of one man's fasting and prayer? Absolutely yes. Just ask Daniel. To order, call the number on your screen right now or visit newwine.co.uk. What happens when you fast? Unleashing the incredible power of fasting and prayer.